Hey everybody, it's Andrew here at Vespa Portland, and I'm standing here with Brooke Rice. Uh, Brooke Rice is a friend and longtime customer of ours who has a 2020 Vespa GTS Super Sport in this really rad matte blue. Brooke has done a ton of uh, customizations to this bike over the, the years he's had it, but in this video, we're talking about where this bike is at this point in time. Uh, so we're gonna talk about this a little bit, but we're also gonna talk about Brooke's riding history, kind of what led him to a two-wheeled life in general, what led him to Vespas, and then a little bit about Halloween, because Brooke here is a <laughs> enthusiast. And if you're in the Portland area, bonus for you, in roughly a month from now on Friday, October 13th, Friday the 13th, uh, Brooke is going to be leading his third Halloween ride around the Portland area, and if you're in the Portland area, you should join. Uh, it's gonna go see some cool things, but we'll get to that. Hey Brooke, I just talked a ton, man. How are you doing? <laughs> I'm doing all right, thanks for having me over, <laughs> yeah. Andrew. Uh, so let's start with a little history, like what uh, got you riding? I know that you're, sure. you begged your parents for a mini bike God. when you were a kid. Yeah, I was like eight or ten years old and the only thing I wanted in life at the time was mini bike, mini bike, mini bikes. And I saw my friends ride up and down the street and I used to run alongside them as fast as I could and try to keep up with them. But uh, I begged and it worked. I broke my parents down and they bought me a 75cc Kawasaki mini bike. Awesome. And we have a photo of that, I think. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So how many bikes have you had in your lifetime oh, leading up to your GTS? Oh, probably seven. And I bought them for all different, different reasons. In my 20s, I was crazy. I wanted an adrenaline rush, so I got a big sport bike. Nice. In my 30s, I picked up a job that forced me to commute 65 miles and away, so I, I picked up a, an economical Honda Cruiser. And I put 65,000 miles on that thing in two years. Jeez. I just rode my butt off in some of the busiest traffic in LA. And I started to mellow out. I took a break from, um, from motorcycling for a while to go into hang gliding of all things. I actually learned the value of, uh, of, of like risk management and taking things slower and easy. And that's kind of what brought me to my Vespa is um, I'd done everything pretty much. I still have a Ducati that I keep at home that I still enjoy riding. Um, but I started a family and I wanted other ways to bond with my family. And I thought, you know what, a scooter just for around town. I could get crazy on the sport bike and the twisties, but scooter mm -hmm. would be absolutely perfect. I showed up at Vespa Portland and you practically begged me to take a red GTS on a test ride while my daughter was here. I have a vague memory of that. Uh, it was a year before I actually bought this one, oh, okay. but it left such an impression on my daughter. You found an extra small helmet for her. Oh, we yeah. rode around <laughs> and I was happy. She was really happy. And, uh, when it came time, I, uh, I was unemployed at the time, but I scraped up the money. I, I came in and I was dead set on a, a gray one. You didn't have the gray one. My daughter and my wife overrode me and they said, no, blue is the color you are going to get. <laughs> so and that's, what it, that's exactly what happened. I got the blue one. Was that here or is that at home, that conversation? That conversation was at home. I was thinking, <laughs> well, I'm thinking about it. And they know when I think about something, it's happening. It's happening. Heck yeah. So. A man of decisions. <laughs> <laughs> what was the trigger that said, I need to ride on two wheels? Uh, initially, it was the feeling of flying. It was like motorcycling, riding scooters, riding two wheels fast is the closest you can come to flying without actually hopping in an airplane. And you keep it in your garage, you go out whenever you want to, catch a nice scene, mm -hmm. do whatever you want with it. Mm -hmm. So it was the adrenaline rush and then initially, and then it started to take on a sort of life of its own where if I was feeling lonely, I'd go out for a group ride. If I was feeling too stressed out, I'd go out on my own and ride for, you know, 50 miles on my own to clear my head. If, um, if I wanted to do other things, like go catch some scenes, I would do that and just admire the view. But um, since moving to Portland, my absolute favorite ride so far, and this is one that probably a lot of people haven't done, is... I have a guess about what this is, but go ahead. Okay get up at four or five in the morning uh -huh. and ride across each of the bridges at oh. in the morning when it is dead quiet, there's no traffic. You have the lights shimmering off the river. Huh. You're the only person on the freeway. It literally feels like you're 
driving through a painting. My it, guess was going to be the St. Helens ride you do super early in the morning. To the mountain. Yeah. Yeah, that was, I think that took me four or five hours round trip. That's not bad. Oh yeah, because you came here at like 10.30. So yeah, I, I, said, to, I said hi. Yeah, I just I, rode to St. Helens. I'm going home. I'm like, what? <laughs> we just opened. <laughs> the scooter has been absolutely great. I've done really long rides, and this is actually more comfortable than a lot of the longer rides. No painkillers involved. Um, no stops to stretch the legs because I have plenty of leg room on the scooter. Mm -hmm. uh, I can stretch and move around. Um, I'm not stuck in a single position as I'm riding. Lots of arm room so I can move back and forth. It's just... I always tell people you have more room to move about the cabin. I do. GTS. <laughs> and, a, and a guy my size, 6'5", I never would have guessed there was so much leg room. Like I literally have four or five inches. You had a long life on two wheels. You've had a lot of bikes. You've ridden a lot of places. Why a Vespa? You know, I, um, I tried out different scooters and most of them have this stupid little step that oh, just okay. jammed my knees on straight the into the debt on the seat. And I sat on a Vespa. My daughter was here when I did the test ride. Mm -hmm. uh, she loved it. I also love the classic Italian styling. Of course, the Primavera with me. Not gonna work. Ain't, ain't gonna work. Nope. So I sat on the GTS and I know I still look a little big on one. I look, a, I look big on everything I ride. It was great. It felt great. It had enough power. Uh, had some get up and go, was really, really maneuverable in the city, you know, when dodging potholes and whatnot. Oh, yeah, yeah. And my daughter was able to uh, actually touch the foot pegs with her legs. I know you can get extenders, but she didn't need them. She was, I think, six or seven years old when she sat on the back. She's tall. She has long legs like me. <laughs> Where do you think that comes from? Wild guess. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Brooke, well, that's all good stuff. Do you want to move on to talking about your steed? Oh. Steed. <laughs> Steer. <laughs> so you asked me about the naming my scooter, and I, it's fun, there was a funny story associated with this. I actually started modding it, and I put a chopped fly screen on it, and it was blue, and it had, it, it almost looked like a cop bike. So just for fun, I named it Tackleberry when I first had it. It looked something like a police officer would ride around town, and I was like, no, I've got to change this. I've got to make it way, way better. So that motivated me to get more mods and it started to develop a personality. When I added the exhaust, it sounded throaty, very in your face. And it started to develop this sort of, I don't know, wicked personality about it. It would bark as it was going down the street. So I named it, uh, its proper name is Vecchio Malvagio, which translated in Italian means um, wicked old man. And so I took that and I cut it and I called it Vecchi. I wanted to make this thing stand out and I wanted it to be noticed. So I started to develop it, uh, make it louder. It definitely draws attention and it's more of a slightly a, a joke uh, in a way because I wanted to see how far I could take this with a scooter to make it as weighty and to make it as, as muscular as possible. And so I gave it tattoos, I gave it uh, smoked out mirrors, I blacked everything out, I gave it a, uh, a throaty exhaust, blinking light, and a horn that sounds like a 1970s Camaro. Yeah, my three favorite mods that I've done so far, um, one, the exhaust, and that really gave it a personality. I always get people looking back going, what the hell is that? And then when they see a scooter, it's like, oh my God, that's a scooter. Uh, my next favorite mod, and this is one completely unintentional. Um, my scooter was in the shop getting uh, worked on and Tom actually had the idea, or was it JP, sent me a picture while I was at home of the black horn cover with the red inset on the front. And he said, how do you like the looks of this? And I was instantly like blown away by what he did. So it was a mod that I hadn't even thought about that Vespa Portland sent to me and said, here you go. So that one has a special place in my heart because that's Vespa Portland's touch to my scooter. The third one, um, and this is, this is actually a pretty functional one is my Beeline Moto. 
and it allows me to navigate the streets just using a little arrow as an indicator telling me which way to turn. Uh, it's not completely perfect, but what it does for me is it eliminates the need for me to mount my phone and clutter up the look of my bike. The paint was um, an idea. I love cruising around town and, I see, and seeing all the tattoo shops with their windows done up. I found a guy who's pretty known for his artwork doing windows for tattoo shops. I saw him and I contacted him. I asked him, could you do that to my scooter? He'd never done a scooter before. He'd never, he'd, he'd done cars and vehicles, um, but he's really known for his gold leaf and his silver leaf and his American traditional style of painting. And he was really jazzed about working with me. His name is DK Signs from Portland. This process from start to finish took me about three years only because the guy was so book solid and he really took his time, sketched out everything, gave everything like seven coats of clear coat to preserve it, did his research on the art. Uh, we both had similar tastes. He was a big Sailor Jerry fan and, as well. I have my back done and I also have um, a piece on my leg done. And he really just spent the time to do it right. And uh, it's not by any means perfect. It doesn't look like a decal, but it's not supposed to be a decal. It's supposed to look handmade. I gave him carte blanche. There is one area that I uh, asked him to do and that was the front of the skull and I asked him if he could do one of my leg. So he took a picture of my leg and made an image and put it on my scooter. The windscreen, I actually couldn't find it anywhere in the States. I had to contact the company and had them special deliver it. Levers, mirrors, and custom bar end weights that would allow me to swap uh, mirrors out. I, I changed them out maybe three, four times a year just to change up the look of my scooter. And I had the trim added, I think, when I had other mods. Uh, the wheels were installed here. Those um, Ragon wheels I picked up from SIP Scooter Center. And uh, they're a little bit heavier than stock. I also have a TPMS installed on the, the wheels. Tire pressure monitoring system. It beeps at me when my tire pressure goes low and there's an app installed on my phone that um, alerts me when my tires get too low. And of course I had to swap out the badge. It's, it's, you can't even tell it was swapped out, but it's a darker shade of blue uh, than the original stock one was. Yeah, the lights I got from scooterwest.com, the headlight I did, the uh, other lights, the turn signal lights I picked up from Scooter Center in the UK. And the cool thing about these is they bounce around and do all sort of neat things. I should interrupt you there to say that we place orders with Scooter West, SIP, and Scooter Center on an almost weekly basis. So if anybody watching this is thinking about customizing their bike at all, you can just piggyback on one of our orders instead of paying all the shipping to your own house if you're gonna have us install it anyway. And the brake light, that actually was the cheapest item on my list. And that was an AliExpress special. But the cool thing about this is that it bounces up and down. Another modification that was just completely on a whim was I had these cool lights added to the ground uh, to my scooter. It serves as both an attention getter plus I don't have to wear high vis at night. I just turn these on and I go on my merry way when it's night. A lot of people notice me and it kind of looks cool. I only use them maybe a couple times a year. One is for the upcoming Halloween ride and it just kind of gives it a nice glowy kind of look to it. And the screens I swapped out, I could not find a matte black screen set anywhere. Uh, I found one at Scooter Center, Moto Nostra brand. And the other, the very last item that I have is the luggage hook. And it's a metal one that is also in matte black and it's really beefy, really hefty. I never use it because I'm afraid to scratch up my paint, but it still looks nice. The exhaust, um, well, of course I did this myself. Yeah, yeah. Those were installed here. I did the mirrors myself, but the trim was done by you guys, as well as the pegs and the horn and the light. I did the windscreen myself. The shocks were done here, so was the oil pan. The cover was, uh, I believe I did that myself. It 
it was an off-the-shelf eBay item, and I got very lucky I had an upholsterer actually install the seat because I didn't want to mess it up. I did this all for fun, just to, uh, I had a creative streak and I decided to apply it to my Vespa. Uh, I think the next mod that I want to do is, uh, actually two mods that I want to do. One is to add a set of brakes, maybe um, swap out with a pair of Frandos or Brembos, and the other is to add a clutch so I could rev bomb Harleys at stoplights. I know that you love Halloween. Uh, yeah. I know you love Halloween a lot, because if you Google the name Brooke Rice on Halloween, other than this video on YouTube, you're gonna see pumpkin carving videos because this guy is a professional pumpkin carver. I am not a professional. When... <laughs> no? I appreciate it, but well, no, I guess technically it's... you're professional if you're 51% of your income. It's only a hobby at this point. That's a hell I'm, of a hobby. I'm very good at my hobby, yeah. yes. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. What is up with your love for Halloween? How did you get into that? And how did you get into carving all these pumpkins that the crowd is gonna see on the screen here in a second? So, um, I set up a display when we were living in Boise, Idaho, and um, it was a very scary display. I dressed up in this very scary costume with a hood over my head, and I had a strobe light going on in my front window. To decorate the walkway going up to that scary window, I would carve pumpkins, and I started out with, um, with some simple patterns. The kids would literally be dragged by their parents who were trying, the kids were trying to avoid me in the window while the parents were dragging them up to look at the pumpkins in my walkway. And literally I would jump out and scare the kids. The kids would run away and the parents would stay there and, and look at the pumpkins for like 10 minutes. And, and these weren't anything elaborate. Initially I started out as pumpkin masters patterns and there's also another site called zombiepumpkins.com. Great tutorials on how to learn if you're ever interested in getting into it. That was almost 10 years ago, and every year since then, with a couple of layoffs in that period, I had some free time on my hands, and I had an inspiration to develop my skill in pumpkin carving. So I went to Michael's and Joanne, and I picked up some foam craft pumpkins. The nice thing about these is you could spend a ton of time on these, and they don't go bad. I've had some in my display that are five, six years old. So I'm able to put a lot of attention to detail into them. And every year I host a Halloween display. It has grown. It originally started out as just my neighbors with maybe 50, 60 people. Last year I had over 3,000 people show up to my home. Really? It's spread. 3,000? It's completely spread. Wow. I hosted it for six or seven nights, including Halloween. Mm -hmm. and I get about 500 people a night show up and it's become a yearly tradition for them. Every year I try to carve 30 or 40 pumpkins. I start in the middle of the doldrums, you know, January, because that's when Christmas ends and that's when we're sitting on our hands doing <laughs> nothing, wishing the weather was warm, waiting to ride. Yep. That's when I carve and I have this, I plan out and I've attracted quite a bit of attention for it. I've had most major news outlets show up at my house. Every year, it seems like the crowds get bigger and bigger. This year, I just, I had to cut back. I'm doing it two weekends this year instead of three. We'll see what happens. And I'm not as, as being, you know, promotional about it as I have in past years. But I still And here still we are doing a video. I know, here we are doing a video. <laughs> and maybe I'll reach out to the new scooter crowd and turn them on on the Halloween which actually is a good segue into the ride that I do. It is. If you're in the Portland area or nearby, Friday the 13th, October 13th, you should meet up at? Lone Fir Cemetery. And from there, what's gonna happen? We are going to go on a ride that's about, oh, 12 to 15 miles. Total riding time usually lasts between 45 minutes and an hour. We stop at some of the most outrageously decorated homes in the Portland area. And we gawk and we just have a great time. We all dress up in a costume. We decorate our scooters. I know, um, I know Natasha has something really big up her sleeve this year. She does. My co-organizer, Jessica, who also runs the Maidens of Mayhem Scooter Club, every year she comes and just blows everybody out. She, she decorated her scooter as uh, 
a peacock two years ago. Oh yeah. And, and she, she had all these too. big flowing feathers. Right. Just completely amazing. Yeah. At the same time, it's an absolute nightmare to plan because I have about a two week window, October 1st to October 13th, where people are just starting to get their decorations ready and I have to go around and scope out and pick out the five or six best houses. Yeah. One of those is guaranteed though. Um, I don't want to spoil too much, but there will be a special treat um, when we are able to visit one of the most well-known, um, I'll say, graveyards in the Portland area. Oh! I just went to a hotel room party with these folks and it was wild. They're allowing yeah. <laughs> us to do something very special this year that the general public will not have access to. Well, there you go. I'm just going to leave it at that. Not bad. Um, as far as the other homes, not even sure, haven't even I'm, I'm going to be on my scooter this weekend, next weekend, and the following weekend out trying to go scouting out, <laughs> getting Jessica's input. She always has veto plow, uh, power over me. She tells me which houses are lame, which houses are great, uh -huh. and, um, and she's the co-organizer. She's a great help, so we're looking forward to it. But again, it'll be a lot of work. It'll be very hectic until gotcha. that time. And when it's all done, I'm just like, Oh, thank goodness. I've been on this ride now for two years. I never know if the next one's going to happen because like, like Brooke said, it's so much like last minute work and scouting. You never really know if the houses are going to come through, if the weather's going to cooperate and if he's even got the energy to do the ride <laughs> at that point. So I'm pretty excited that it's the third annual. Uh, last year was super fun. We went all over the place. The year before that, we went way down to West Lynn to Brooks house. Actually, this one will be just as cool. I think this is one of my favorite rides of the year. Uh, and I kind of can't wait to get onto it. So if people in the Portland area or a little bit beyond want to go, how do they find this ride? On Facebook, I set up an account called Haunted Scooter Rides PDX, um, and you'll find all the event details. I've also notified all of the big people that you know run scooter clubs in the area, and I'm hoping that they will post it on their sites as well. And if you're also in the area and you want even more Halloween fun, please visit my home display, which is the pumpkin display at West Lynn. And you could find that on Facebook, or you could also find it on the web at pumpkindisplay.westland.com. Uh, lots of videos, you know, it's kind of like a, a pumpkin slash concert laser light show with music type thing completely kid friendly but also completely mind-blowing at the same time and fog machines lots and lots of fog lots of fog that'll also be in the description not below. exhaust fog not yeah. exhaust not today that'll be in the description too so thanks brooke it's like pretty excited you came in Hi. this is an old series friends of espa portland that we did three others of i think pre-pandemic god it's been a hundred years and I was always thinking, how do we revive this? And like, let's do like a more customized bike this time and see what happens. And Brooks just kind of been around the Portland scene for a good while and has a very cool bike to show. And it's awesome that you could come in on Thursday. I am Thursday. so honored. I am completely blown away. As you know, I do not like to be in the camera at all. I know, uh, I'm blown away here. <laughs> no, I just feel so humbled. And I, and I actually, it's actually a big honor to be a part of this. And if it weren't for Vespa Portland, I would not come back over and over and over and over again to have work done on my scooter. That's true. If I didn't trust you Thanks. or Tom or everyone else in the service department. So totally. uh, I appreciate your support as well. Awesome, man. I'm glad to keep you rocking so you can do more <laughs> cool things and take us on more Halloween rides. <laughs> All right, everybody. Thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed Brooks bike. You got a favorite part of it? Put it in the comments. You want to talk any trash? Keep it to yourself. We'll see you in the next video. Take care. Thank you.